Everybody, in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the versions of Python that are out there. And you're going to learn a few near things. So I've gone to python.org. So let's jump into the docs. Once you know your way around Python, at least the basics of Python, the foundations of Python, then this site becomes a gold mine of information. But you have to know your basics first. Video is sponsored by Kite, which is a machine learning powered plugin that works with major code editors like Atom, VS Code, Sublime, Vim, and PyCharm. And basically, they use machine learning to superpower code completions. So I'm showing you Kite in action so you can see how it works. Kite uses ranked completions that are sorted by relevance rather than popularity or alphabetical order. Kite has line of code completion, so it completes a full line of code. They have something called Intelligent Snippets, which is an advanced function call experience using machine learning to suggest placeholder values. Finally, if you look on the uh, right-hand side, as the cursor moves, you see an example of something called Copilot, which uh, basically displays the docs relative to wherever your cursor happens to be. One of the big selling points for me about Kite is that it will reduce the number of lines of code that you write by as much as 50%. As you know, I don't take many sponsors, so this is a worthwhile product to get into, and it's free. Link is below. As you can see, it comes with a tutorial, so you can jump into it, learn about everything you need to learn. It's pretty good, you know? And you can start writing code now. If you don't understand programming, you don't understand Python, this stuff is going to be pretty difficult for you. But if you, you know, if you know the basics, then this is pretty easy. If I want to learn something new about Python, I just jump here and I just check out, hey, let's see what's in new in 3.7. Of course, uh, yeah, let's get out of the tutorial, Python.org, hold on. Yeah, it's keeping me in the tutorial here. Yeah, all the Python tutorials. So let me just get out of this. Bing, boom. There we go. So I see what's in Python 3 in terms of features. 3.7, excuse me. Uh, it tells me what's going on, what's in Python 3.7. This article explains the new features of Python 3.7 versus 6. 3.7 was released June 2018. For full details, see the change log. We go to the change log. It shows you when everything came out, what was changed. Look at all this. Now you're going to have to learn everything here. Everything. I'm just joking. There is no programmer in the world that knows even 3% of all of this, if that. So what I want to point out to you guys, well, let me just jump over to 3.9. You see, we got a bug here. Look at that. See, I went to 3.9. It doesn't go 3.9. It's still in 3.7. Little bug in there, little thing. So I'm just going to go like this. Bing, boom. That's for knowing the web stack comes in handy even when you're browsing the web. All right, so 3.9, let's jump into this now. You have to understand, 3.9, this article was updated on June 18th, I'm recording this June 18th. This is still not a production version of Python. Uh, the production version of Python is uh, 3.8, so build three, right? That's how you know it's not a production version, but it's interesting to look for. This article explains the difference between 3.9 3.8, Notes, pre-release users should be aware that this document is currently in draft form. That's because they're still working on Python 3.9. Uh, it will be updated substantially as P Python 3.9 moves towards release. So it's worth checking back even after reading earlier versions. So one of the first things I want to point out is uh, this right here. You should check for deprecation warning in your code. So let me just jump into this and I'll give you my points. When Python 2.7 was still supported, many functions were kept backward, were kept for backward compatibility with Python 2.7. With the end of 2.7 support, these backward compatibility layers have been removed or will be removed soon. Most of them emitted a deprecation warning for several years. For example, using collections.mapping instead of collections.abc.mapping emits a deprecation warning since Python 
released in 2012. So, uh, test your applications with the uh, dash default trigger command line option to see deprecation warning, blah, 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 blah. What did it go on to say? Um, this is the key point I want to point out. It has been decided to keep a few backward compatibility layers for one last release. I guess 3.9 here, 3.9. To give more time to Python projects, maintainers to organize the removal of Python 2 support and to add support for Python 3.9. And then they get into all kinds of details. Then we go into some new features. So first of all, when was Python 2.7 released? Now they're talking about still supporting 2.7, even though they've been telling us for years, now we'll go to 2.7. 2.7, all right, Python docs, 2.7. This document is for an old version of Python that is no longer supported. Well, kind of is supported, right? You should upgrade and read the Python documentation for the current stable release. Now, 2.7 was uh, released. Uh, let's see, when was that release? <laughs> July 3rd, 2010. So the difference between 2.7 and the three branches of Python is uh, big, but not so big. If you had learned 2.7, for you to learn 3 would be pretty easy. It would take you, you know, an hour to run through things and stuff, if that long. That being said, um, you got the 2x branch, which is, and then you get the 3x branch. 3x means 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, etc. 2x is, there was 2.3, 2.5, 2.7, etc. So, uh, what I want to point out is all the way up here, 10 years later, in 3.9, right? Let's see, look at that bug in this system. Let me just, again, I got to go change the URL. Python, you got to get your URL. All right, here we go. All the way in 3.9, which has not been released in July, in June 18, 2020, has not been released yet. They're still talking about some partial support for 2.7, which is an old version of Python. If you're gonna learn Python, you wanna learn any of the three branches. You see a course of three, five, six, seven, eight, you're fine. You see a 2.7, eh, you still learn a lot about Python, and then you, but you know, you, there's plenty with the three X branches that you can learn from, so you wouldn't have to do that. My larger point is, is that a lot of young nerdlings get very caught up with, oh no, I've learned 3.6 and we're in 3.8. Oh no, it's a disaster. I, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> the fact of the matter is the, difference, the differences between Python 3.6 and 3.8 are all these marginal things. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff here that's listed, no question, right? A whole bunch of stuff listed. But at the end of the day, all these things, if you look through it, it's just little tiny things that you may run across once a year, depending on the type of work that you're doing. Not a major issue. Like, uh, it probably won't broke, break your code. 99% chance it won't break your code, right? So a lot of times, these new versions, these subversions of Python, you know, going from 3.6 to 7 to 8, you're adding a little bit new capabilities, you're refining a few things, et cetera, et cetera. It's not like the major break that we saw from the 2x branch to 3 branch. Um, that was a huge difference there. That was a major revision, and that was significant, where your code would break, although they did have converters. So there you go. So they, with Python 3.8, which was uh, released uh, a little less than a year ago, um, it added some new capabilities, new features, right? Just stuff to make your coding a little bit easier. Some people will use this, some people won't. Um, you know, so they added things like uh, a new assignment expression. It, it, what all this is, this is like a shortcut method of doing something. Normally you would have to do this with two lines of code, you do with one now. Um, positional only parameters. Again, they, these are kind of like shortcut ways of getting the job done. You know? Uh, parallel file system cache for compiled bytecode. So this is more structural. Again, a lot of this stuff 
uh, the vast majority of these changes won't affect you much, if at all. So just understand, um, I talked about this in previous videos where you would see deprecation warnings on your code. Deprecation warning is basically a warning from the uh, people who are managing the, the programming language, whether it be Python or Java or JavaScript, etc. Uh, a deprecation warning is basically saying, hey, this code that you're using here, it's still going to work, but uh, eventually it won't work. So you may want to uh, stop using it and maybe change it up for something new. Uh, that's a deprecation warning in a nutshell. I have seen in my career, it's very rare that deprecated code it gets uh, disabled. It's extremely rare. That being said, if code is deprecated, you should switch up, but it's not like an emergency. You have to stop all, stop everything, and oh my God, we got deprecation here. It doesn't work that way. It's very rare that I've seen that they break uh, old code, although it does happen. When they did the big break from 2.7 to 3, it did break some stuff. There's no question about that, but that was 10 years ago. Anyhow, I hope this helps. This was uh, designed to give you a little perspective about the speed of a change in a development language, in a programming language, and also to, if you're not aware, to go to python.org. Python.org is a good site. Once you know your foundations of Python programming, this site becomes a really good source of information. Uh, all the latest news, any events you want to get into, the docs, uh, you, you know, even looking for job postings, I guess. So there you go. This is uh, where I suggest you go. I hope that makes sense. Um, we'll take it from there.